your hand on it. If you know that you know, there is no one like Jehovah. There's nobody like him. Can I get a witness in the house? He stands alone in majesty and in power and in faithfulness to his people. God is good and all the day. This is the day that the Lord hath made that all of us rejoice and be what? It's just another day that the Lord has kept us. So we we'll thank God for his love, his kindness, his mercy, and we're just glad to be in the service one more time. Put those hands together. Come on, Reverend Watson. Take us to the throne of grace. Thank you. Thank you. Let us pray. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Our dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning to say thank you. Thank you for having blessed us last night. Thank you for having allowed your angels to encamp round about us while we slumber and slept to an unfriendly world. But right early this morning at the dawning of a brand new day, great was your faithfulness again. You were there for us again this morning. In our bedroom, you were there. You touched us again with a finger of your divine love. Cause our eyes to come open to behold the beauty of another day. And so we find ourselves here this morning in the house of worship to give honor glory and praise unto your holy and righteous name. We come to praise you with one voice, saying that the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth through all generations. We just want to thank you and bless your name in the sanctuary one more time. We realize that you didn't have to do it for us this morning. We didn't have to be here this morning. We could have could be some other place this morning. We could be in, a, in an ER room. We could have been some other place. But for your grace and your mercy, you bid it our golden mamas to, be, to roll on a few days long. And for that, we are grateful. We come to say thank you, Lord. We come to bless your name and say hallelujah to the name of our God. But uh, we realize that in all of these blessings that there are those this morning who are less fortunate than we are. There are some homebound right now. There are some in the hospital nursing home. We uh, lift them up before you in the name of Jesus. Ask that you touch someone right now, whomever you please. Touch someone with a healing touch this morning. Heal somebody right now. Heal in the name of Jesus, we pray. Somebody been waiting on a blessing. We ask that you are knock on somebody's door this morning with a healing blessing and heal. And raise somebody up from their sick bed right now, we pray. Oh, bless us, we pray. We thank you for the season that we've been celebrating. But Lord, we realize that every day is a day of thanksgiving. So we just come to say thank you and to bless your name. But Lord, when we look around us and see all the things that are happening, we know that there is only one that can do something about these problems. And so we ask that you will look upon this nation this morning. We pray for the leaders of this nation, from Washington right on down. We ask that you would just bless, continue to bless this nation. Bless those that sit in high places this morning. And Lord, we ask that you continue to bless this branch of Zion called Mount Calvary. We pray for his under shepherd. We pray for our spiritual leader. We pray for him. We pray for his family. We pray that you will continue to undergrade him with your grace and with your mercy. Lead and guide him in the way that you would have your people to go, we pray. Well, we pray for each and every one, every family this morning. We pray for those who are listening in by social media. 
We pray for all your people throughout the land and country. Those that love you, Lord, we ask that you are blessed and keep them in your grace and in your love. Lord, we realize that we are living in some treacherous times, but we ask that you will go with us all the days of our lives. We ask that you would just let your grace and your mercy go ahead of us where we're, wherever we are going. Prepare the way for us when we get there, that everything will be well. We know that you can do it because you have all power in your hand. Our Father, we come this morning realizing that we could praise you all day long, but it couldn't come close to doing what you did for us out on Calvary. We just want to stop and say thank you, Lord, for the shedded blood this morning. Thank you, Lord. For the, the, the blood that was shed covered our sin. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. Your name is worthy to be praised. We thank you for salvation. Now, Father, we realize that this old world is not our home. But, Lord, we have heard of a city where no stone cloud rise. We have heard of a city where there is no more weeping, no more sickness, no more dying, no more crying, no doctors over there. We are over there where Jesus is. We ask that you bless us all, Lord, to be able to hear your welcome voice, saying one day, well done, thy good and faithful son. Come up high and I make you rule over men. Oh, we close this prayer with thanksgiving, because when we look back from whence you brought us, when we cry our souls, cry out, thank you, Lord. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of our God, Lord, this is my prayer in Jesus' name, I pray. Jesus. Let every heart say. Amen. While you're standing, we thank God for such a powerful prayer. The hymn this morning says, what a fellowship, what a joy divine. We are leaning on his everlasting arm. Oh, what a blessedness. Oh, what a peace is mine. What are we doing? Leaning on. The everlasting arms. Come on, sing with power and with perfect. Everybody, what a fellowship. Let me hear you. Come on.
saying he's worthy. God is tremendously worthy of all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. You may be seated in the house of our God. Can't speak for you, but I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Amen. And we bless his name for just another opportunity to come together. Those of us who are here literally and those who are tuning in virtually, good morning. God bless you. And we pray that you too are leaning on his everlasting arm. We pray that you too are trusting in him who will not leave you whatsoever the years may bring. Amen. There's nothing like serving a faithful God. Again, we thank God for the opportunity. And I know God is still blessing you because at least this many folk survived Thanksgiving. Amen, somebody. We thank God for the opportunity to hopefully express on Thursday our gratitude and love with family and with friends, but also thanks to God for his bounty of blessings. Uh, there are some who I know left, and I see them in the building tonight, which lets me know God gave them traveling mercy and grace and allowed them to make it back home safely. Amen. So we thank God for your presence, and we pray that you had a wonderful uh, time of celebration. And not that we are done, but we definitely just want to acknowledge uh, the day that's set aside to give thanks, which is Thanksgiving Day. At this time, I'm going to ask, if we, before I give the announcements, I want to ask all of our guests to stand. If you have any guests, would you stand this morning? Any guests tuning in? God bless you as well. Well, as you are standing, we say to you, good morning, God bless you, and we're so glad that you are here. Uh, maybe you're visiting family uh, here in the area for the Thanksgiving weekend, or maybe you recently relocated to this area. We want to say whatever the case may be, uh, we're grateful for your presence today. And we pray that something would take place that would encourage you along your journey. If you are visiting, we pray that God will allow you to make it back to your destination safely. But if you've recently uh, relocated to this area, you, we would that you would prayerfully consider Mount Calvary uh, as your place of worship. I will tell anybody anywhere, you may find some bigger, but you'll be hard-pressed to find any better. Because the motto is simply this, they shall know that we are Christians by our love. And we love you with the love of Christ, and we're so thankful for your presence here today. God bless you. Come on, let's give our guests another warm Mount Calvary welcome. Brief announcements this morning. Um, before we go to the screen, I do want to encourage you uh, on this Wednesday will be the last session uh, for the month of our Thanks Living service. I just want to emphasize that, that um, you would join us uh, this Wednesday as we will close out 7 o'clock p.m., uh, we're looking for a blessed time in the Lord, so we pray that you would be here as we can close out this month giving God thanks for all that he has done for us. Amen? So please put that on your calendar, and we hope to see you out this Wednesday. As always, in the announcements, we'll highlight this. We encourage you to be a part of our Monday morning with the Master, as well as our time of study on Wednesday. Our Bible study is on Wednesday morning, and normally 6.15, uh, our church a school study, but as, as I just mentioned, this uh, Wednesday we will be here at the church for our final Thanksgiving celebration for the month of November. Amen? We ask now that you will turn your attention to the screen for this morning's announcements. Good morning, Mount Calvary. Once again, thank you for allowing me to be the voice for the church announcements at Mount Calvary Baptist Church on this Sunday, November 27th, 2022. We began with 2022's final Thanksgiving celebration. Reverend Jarvis Wright at the Mount Tabor Baptist Church in Palatka. That's Wednesday, November 30th, 7 p.m. for our final Thanksgiving celebration. And don't forget, Youth Sunday School is every second, third, and fourth Sunday at 4 p.m. And after that, Bible study, Wednesday, November 30th at 8.30 a.m. Attention to all of our ministry chairs. The deadline to submit your calendar of events for 2023 is Thursday, December the 1st. Communion pickup is Thursday, December 1st, 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Here's two friendly reminders. First, Sunday, December 2nd at 6 p.m., Sunday school meeting in the Family Life Center. Sunday, December the 4th, the Ephraim Tribe meeting will be immediately after service in the Family Life Center. 
Here's some dates for you to say. Monday, December the 5th, Celebration of Life, 6 p.m. in the Sanctuary. Now the deadline to submit forms is Monday, November 28th at noon. Forms are in the magazine rack in front of the office. Sunday, December the 11th, join Pastor Coffey and the Voices of Calvary at Everlasting Church of God, 205 Palmetto Street, Eustis, Florida, 32726. It all begins at 3 p.m. and Elder William Robinson Pastor is your host. Thursday, December the 15th, the food distribution drive starts at 11 a.m. and ends at 1 p.m. or until supplies run out. December the 15th, the church business meeting starts at 6 p.m. Saturday, December the 17th, Widows Indeed Ministry Members Luncheon starts at 12 noon featuring guest Chef Carol from New York City. Pick up your flyer and sign up in the lobby. Saturday, December the 17th at 12 noon, the CEC Room 4 Security Ministry Members Meeting. Don't forget, there are several ways for you to give here at Mount Calvary. By scan, by mail, by Dropbox, and in person. And last but not least, this Monday and every Monday, Monday morning with the Master. Our virtual prayer and praise every Monday at 8.30 a.m. Those are the announcements for this Sunday, November 27th, 2022. Y'all have a wonderful day and stay blessed. Amen. We pray that you were paying attention and that you would govern yourselves accordingly. Uh, if you were not here this past Wednesday for our Thanksgiving service, uh, you missed a treat. We had been sharing that we had a good friend of mine that was scheduled to come and uh, bless us for our Thanksgiving service, but due to circumstances beyond her control, and I pray that you would keep the Whitaker family in your prayers, uh, that she's unable to make it. But the Lord always has somebody ready to say a word, uh, and I want you to know uh, that we were blessed tremendously uh, this Wednesday by one of our own, and I just want you to know, Sister Yvette, God used you in a mighty, mighty way. Come on, just stand and thank God so they'll know who she is. Wonderful voice. Amen. And without hesitation or reservation, she's stepped up to the bed and allowed God to uh, not only speak through her, but to speak through her and bless us and remind us that truly we are to be a grateful people, not just in the month of November, but every day of our lives. Amen. So we thank God for that wonderful presentation on Wednesday, and again, this uh, this this Wednesday, the Reverend Jarvis Wright uh, will be coming to us from Mount Tabor. I want you to be here, and I keep emphasizing that I want a good turnout. I want to finish the year, uh, the month strong as we go into the uh, month of December. We want to finish November with a good crowd out for our final Thanksgiving service. Amen? Well, today is the final Sunday of the month, which means that it is what? It is birthday Sunday. All persons born in the month of November, would you please stand? Members and guests, if you were born in the month of November, please stand. Come on. Happy birthday to you. Happy celebrate because your birthday is coming. Amen and amen. We thank God that he's allowed you to see another year. And we pray that he will continue to bless you immensely and that you will not take uh, this, this past birthday for granted, but continue to thank God every day. And I pray that you'll 
recognizing that he has you even here now for such a time as this for a purpose and a cause. So I pray that God's able to get mileage out of all of our lives as he continues to bring us down through the years. In fact, they used to sing a song back home that says, down through the years, the Lord's been good. Has he been good to you? Amen. We thank God for those who are celebrating a birthday in the month of November. Well, it's time to give. We ask now that you prepare to present your offerings and your tithes and deacons. Would you come as we prepare to receive this offering? Remember that we can't be God giving, but we can be obedient to his word. Those who are tuning in, we pray that you will continue to be faithful by way of your giving as well. And we know that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So we pray that when you come around, you would do so with a smile on your face and pep in your step. Because we recognize you cannot be God-giving, but you can be obedient to his word. And the church said, let us stand as we praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom a blessing flows. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father. follow the specific instructions of our ushers as we prepare to cheerfully give. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are ever grateful and thankful unto thee for all the blessings that you give unto us day in and day out. And Lord, this portion that has been brought back to your house this morning in the form of gifts, tithes, and offerings, we now present them to you in the name of Jesus our Lord. And ask that you receive them in the upbuilding of your kingdom, in the hearts of your people. We thank you, Lord, for the gift. We thank you for the giver as well. Bless us all, we pray. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Let every heart say. Amen. Come on, put your hand on it. Come on. Everybody, if you know you've been blessed, come on, clap those hands. He woke me up this morning, say.
God thank you Christ. He woke you up this morning. God is so good. I'm just looking around the house tonight. I see so many blessings. I, I see Deacon Foster. He, he's still here at 92, 93 years old. That's a blessing. Sister Estelle Kennedy is in church this morning. That's a blessing. Deacon Robinson made it back home. And Deacon S. Robinson is in back in Florida. That's a blessing. And did I mention he woke you up this morning? That's a blessing. You ought to give a shout out like you don't know what I'm talking about. The Lord is blessing you. Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If can you just take 60 seconds, just put those hands together, and give God a praise in this place. Praise the Lord. I witnessed a miracle on this past Thanksgiving because I, I was told that my father-in-law was not going to make it. They had counted him out, but I had Reverend Fontaine and the prayer warriors of Mount Calvary just started praying. And he's doing fine. He's doing so well till hospice thinking about taking the, taking all the stuff back. So don't tell me what God can't do. How many of y'all know he is in the miracle working business? Praise the Lord. Anybody looking for a miracle? He is a miracle working God. And I just want to leave this with you. How can I say thanks for all the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me. Hallelujah, the voice of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am and ever hope to be. He 
he saved me. And with his miraculous power, I thank God he picked me up, then he raised me. I'm a living witness to God. Be the glory. For the day. For the thing. And I want to thank God for that. For the thing. They said I wasn't going to make it. But for the thing. They say my father in law be dead and by Thanksgiving. But for the things he has done. Come on, give God some glory. Yeah. Yeah. You ought to tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. The psalmist just told you, he brought you out. He saved your soul. He made a way. And some of y'all are still sitting down. Give them a 30 second yes. Now, for somebody to do all of that for you, you ought to be able to say, Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. How many folk know it could have been me? 
outdoors. No food, no clothes, all just alone without a friend. You could have been another number with a tragic end. But here's the shout. He didn't see fit to let none of these things be. And every day by his power, he keeps on blessing you and me. That's why we ought to say thank you, Lord, for all you done for. Point to yourself and say, me. Me. Come on, somebody, give him glory. Come on, somebody, give him glory. Come on, somebody, give him glory. Glory, bless his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody, bless him in the house. Come on, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the redeem. Let the redeem of the Lord. Say so. Come on, come on. If you know you have been redeemed, come on, give him another praise in the house this morning. The mere fact that you're alive and well. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 That's the highest praise we can give our God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't let me stop you from praising God. and hold on to your neighbor if you can and begin to pray the prayer of agreement in the house this morning. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Eternal God and our Father, the creator of heaven and earth. The one which was and is and is to come. We give you praise. We give you honor and we give you glory. Lord, we thank you for this privilege this morning. We thank you for this opportunity. That we can come into your house one more time. Just to lift you up. And to praise you. The psalmist David said, Lord, everything that had breath. To praise you. So we come to glorify you this morning. So as we come this morning, we ask that your presence will tabernacle with us this morning. We ask that we not leave the way we came this morning. We ask that you will breathe upon me this morning. Remove self this morning. Let self be slain. Let your Holy Spirit have his own way. Speak through me, Jehovah God. 
I'm empty without you. I'm nothing without you. I'm like a ship without a sail. With no sense of direction without you. So Father, I solely depend on you this morning. As your people listen attentively. For those who are in the sanctuary this morning. And for those who are listening by the way of technology this morning. I pray this morning that the words will go forth with clarity. It will go forth with the anointing. My God, that when we come to the conclusion of this worship experience today, we will see that it was good for us to be in your presence. As your people worship you, God, and do it today. Why we say thanks in Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord in the house. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I love what the psalmist David said. He said, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Praise God. And this morning, I just want to I'm sure with you quickly this morning in brief. So I want you to pray for me. Pray with me. So that I doesn't go until 12 o'clock. I know some people start to pray already. <laughs> I, I, I know we have prayer warriors in, in, in Mount Calvary who love to pray. So uh, that is your assignment. Pray for me. So that I doesn't go until 12 o'clock. So. And quickly turn your Bible with me to Psalms 103. And uh, when you find it, that put a mark there. And then you're going to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18. Just one verse there. Please stand with me for the reading of the word of God. And I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Psalms 103 and uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 18. When you find it, say amen. amen. Right. Psalms 103 from verses 3 to 5. Um, from verse 1 through 5 is relevant. But uh, um, for time's sake, um, I'm just going to read from verse 3 through 5. Who forgives all your sins. Somebody say all. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit. Who crowns you lavishly with loving kindness and tender mercy. Verse 5. Who satisfies your ears with good things. So that, that your youth is renewed like the soaring eagle. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's talking to me. Praise God. So we go over to 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 5. Verse 18. And he said, in every situation, no matter what the circumstances, somebody says circumstances. Be thankful and continually give thanks to God. Why? For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Turn to your other neighbor and say, he's talking to you. Amen. Next one, say, he's talking to you. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Praise God. And... Uh, if I should use a theme this morning, it was, would go like this. A heart of gratitude. A heart of gratitude. And I love that song that Brother Reed just ministered to us with. A heart of gratitude. And the song was in line with my message. Thank you, Brother. Thank you, choir. And uh, a heart 
of gratitude. The late Dr. Miles Monroe said, and I quote, don't die old, die empty. That's the goal of life. Go to the cemetery and disappoint the grave. Let me say that for those who didn't catch it the first time, choir. Don't die old, die empty. That's the goal of life. Go to the cemetery and disappoint the grave. A heart of gratitude. What is the meaning of gratitude? And I'm glad you asked. Gratitude is the quality of being thankful. The quality of being thankful. Readiness to show appreciation for and to the returned kindness. Gratitude. So what is the true meaning of gratitude? Gratitude which rhymes with attitude. And if you ever heard the saying that your attitude will determine your altitude. Have you ever heard that? Yes. So it rhymes with altitude. And it comes from the Latin word gratos. Which means thankful, pleasing. When you are feeling gratitude, Deacon Joseph, you can't but giving thanks. You can't help but giving thanks. Meaning that you are pleased by what someone did for you and you are also pleased by the result. When you have a heart of gratitude, you can't help but to be thankful. The psalmist David put it like this, my brother. Who has a heart of gratitude? When he said in Psalms 118 verses 1. Oh give thanks unto the Lord. My God. He said oh give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. You are thankful. Whether the thing is small or great. But we have a lot of people today Dr. Coffey. Is that you can know when things are going well for them. They are happy. They are cheerful. You see a smile on their face. But as soon as things are not going according to plan or their way. They are not happy. Am I talking to the right church this morning? Hallelujah. A, a, a heart of gratitude. Or uh, Thanksgiving, saints of God, is not seasonal. Let me say that one more time. A heart of gratitude or thanksgiving is not seasonal. Because there is always something, Pastor Coffee, to be thankful for. I said there is always something, Deacon Murray, to be thankful for. The mere fact that you could walk inside the sanctuary this morning, you are to be thankful. The mere fact that you were able to dress yourself, you got to be thankful. The mere fact that you're breathing on your own, it is something to be thankful for. Choir, the mere fact that you're able to sing with your anointing is something to be thankful for. A heart of gratitude. And let me say this. Have you ever been to the supermarket? Hmm. And uh, you know the line is long and you are up to the, the cashier. And uh, you look behind you, Reverend Watson, and you see somebody with just one uh, item past a coffee. Just one. And out of kindness, talk to me. You said, let me give them a skip. Let me put them in front of me. Has that ever happened to you yet? And to your surprise, choir, they didn't even say thank you. Have you ever been there? And trust me, sometimes we really get mad. Am I talking truth? 
Yeah, you might say, oh my God, at least he or she could have said, thank you. All right, let, let me take it up a notch. Have you ever been driving? And I know that most of us are drivers. Most of us are drivers. And you are on the road. And you give somebody a skip, rather. And the person didn't even say thank you. Has that ever happened to you yet? We're talking about a heart of gratitude. So the psalmist David said it like this in Psalms 34. I will bless the Lord, my God. At all times, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. That's not seasonal praise. That's not seasonal praise. That continuous praise. Whether the thing is good or bad. Whether I'm happy or sad. Whether I can pay the bills. Yes, I know Deacon Simpson. My God, I'm still going to give God a praise. Because he deserves all the praises. <laughs> As I run on. The choir sung this melodious song. Led by our dear sister Crockett. My God. Grateful. Gratefulness. Come on, talk to me, church. Gratefulness. With all the issues, brother Adrian. With all the issues, my God. Hallelujah. In my life, I'm still grateful. Gratefulness. Somebody say gratefulness. Gratefulness. Hallelujah. Grateful heart. I'm grateful. Are you grateful this morning? Is there something in your life to be grateful for? Come on, give God a praise in the house. If you are grateful. Saints of God, I could remember. 2013. When I did this major operation. Which they took out all my pancreas. They took out half of my stomach. They took out my spleen. And my gallbladder. I'm walking around with my pancreas on my side right here. And let me tell you something. I'm grateful. Oh. I don't know about you. But I'm grateful, Dr. Coffee, to be alive. To able to function and function effectively. Yeah. Dr. Fontin, I'm grateful. In spite of the missing organs. I'm not looking like what I'm being through. Oh, hallelujah. I'm grateful. Sometimes, Dr. Kofi, we have all the organs and we have all our faculties are functioning. And sometimes we don't even want to open our mouth and praise God. And people require who have less than what we have. Oh, my God. And they choose to praise God in spite of their situation, in spite of their downfall. They say, I'm going to praise God anyhow. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. That was 2013. 2017, Dr. Fontaine, we left from here to go to New Jersey to my nephew's wedding. And I didn't reach the wedding. I end up in the hospital and spent one month in there. I was bleeding through my mouth and through, you know. My stomach had ruptured. And I spent a month in the hospital. When I came out, before that, I, I did a test and I said blood clot was in both legs. Dr. Coffey, this leg here was swelling so much. That it was twice as big as this one. I couldn't lift my leg to go into the tub. My wife had to take care of me. 
And he brought me out. Look what the Lord has done. Come on, somebody praise, praise God in the house. Hallelujah. I'm talking to somebody this morning who need to be grateful, who need to be thankful, who need to have a grateful heart in spite of your situation. Deacon Kirk, you got a right to praise him. Deacon Robinson, you got a right to praise him. Deacon Joseph, you got a right to praise him. Grateful. Grateful choir. Oh, good God. Hallelujah. I tell you, see, if you don't pray for me, I go till 12, 12 o'clock. I know you're praying. I know you're praying. I know you're praying. Why I should be grateful? The men's choir usually sing another song, which go like this. He brought me through this. Do you remember it, choir? He brought me through that. And if he brought me through this, I know he will brought me through that. That's the God we serve. Oh my God. I'm grateful to you because he brought me through this. One of the first things that I'm grateful for, too, is that he woke me up this morning. He placed me into my right mind. My five senses are intact. Secondly, what I'm grateful for, that God sent his only begotten son to die for my sins. Uh, are you grateful for that? Hallelujah. Past, present, and future. My hope is in him. And my future is bright. Don't you know that your future is bright? Because you are in Christ Jesus. Somebody give God a praise. Hallelujah. Grateful. And thirdly, what I'm grateful for is that my mother didn't abort me. Come on. Are you not shouting? That your parents didn't abort you. You are here making a difference. Somebody should give God a praise for that. Yeah. Hallelujah. She did not bother me. I'm grateful. So saints of God, as I run on, Dr. Coffee, point number one, the benefits of gratitude. Yeah, I'm almost done. The benefit of gratitude. And uh, we look at this, saints of God, the power of gratitude. The thing about gratitude, Pastor Coffee, it has to be practiced. <laughs> Did you hear that? Gratitude has to be practiced. And I know you want to hear the benefits of gratitude. Yes. Gratitude, Dr. Covey, it improves self-esteem. It improves self-esteem. It improves energy and health, Dr. Fontaine. It makes us happier and more optimistic. Gratitude. You are more resilient and deal with adversity better. Talk to me, church. You are more generous and giving. Wow. Uh-huh. Giving. It keeps you in the present gratitude. Be happier and notice the present moment more. And I know most of us love this. Number eight, it lowers stress. Anxiety and thoughts. Number nine, be generous and kind to others. Improve relationship. Gratitude. Number ten, provide perspective and help. You look for the good in your life. Gratitude. Gratitude. That's why we should have a grateful heart. Number two is a run on. I tell someone, I'm almost done. Why we should have a grateful attitude. Point number two from the text. He said, he forgive all your sins. Oh my God, you can take that to the bank. He forgives all. Somebody say all. All your sins. He healed all your diseases and sicknesses. 
My God, when you have a grateful heart. Number two, he redeems your life from the pit. Look where the Lord has brought you from. Look. Look back at your life 10, 15, 20 years ago. My God, he brought you out of a horrible pit. Oh my God, you have something to shout about. And not only that, he crowns you lavishly with loving kindness and tender mercy. My God, number three, he satisfies your years, Pastor Kaffee, with good things. Oh my God. So that your youth is renewed. You're getting younger and younger in Christ Jesus. Why? He said he will beautify the meek with salvation. Oh, that's something to shout about. On the last point, I'm, I'm almost done. Why you should have a grateful or a heart of gratitude. For the people, Reverend Watson, and things in your life. Why you should have a grateful heart. For the things, or for the people and things, Dick and Murray, God has put them or placed in your life. Number one, be grateful for your family. Your children, your husband, your wives, your grandchildren, your parents. Be grateful for them. Because many times, Dr. Coffey, that people take the people in their life for granted. Until when they are gone. Then we start to cry and say, oh, I miss mommy, I miss daddy, I, I miss my sister. But when they were alive, you didn't show any form of gratitude. When you're gone, we start to cry. Don't let that happen. Number two, be grateful for your friends. Close friends. Be grateful for good health. Your home. And can I say this? With electricity. <laughs> Did I say that? I said your home... Dr. Fountain with electricity. <laughs> because some home don't have any form of electricity and running water. Don't take that for granted. Air condition. So much to be grateful for. Be grateful for your job. Healthy food. Education. For those who are listening this morning to me. This is for you to be grateful. For your education. And not to mention a good night rest. And be grateful. I know, I know you're going to love this one. For financial savings such as pension, 401k, IRA, and you name it along the line. Be grateful that you have those things for some people don't have it. Be grateful for the fresh air that you're breathing. Transportation. You know, we just get into our truck or our van or whatsoever and we don't drive, come to church. Some people still have to walk. And even if you walk with Adrian, still be grateful for your strength. And if you, even if you have to take the, the, the bus, still be grateful that you have the bus fare. <laughs> still be grateful that you can take the taxi. And if you have your own transportation, still be grateful that you have money to buy gas. Be grateful for clean water. Be grateful for last but not least, this technology. People are watch, watching me right now probably across the world. Some place probably in Africa. Wherever. And this is all because of technology. So we got to be grateful for technology. Pastor Coffee, 15, 20 years ago we didn't have these forms of technology. We didn't have Zoom. Facebook and all of those technology. But look what the Lord has done. We can stay here and talk to somebody in Africa. My God, not to mention FaceTime. Oh, we, we see them in real time. Got to be grateful. Last but not least, modern health. Be grateful for modern health. We can go to the doctor. They can take care of us. 50 years ago, they didn't have these forms of technology. 
So look what the Lord has done. In conclusion, if you don't know why you should have a heart of gratitude or thanksgiving, look at First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, it tells you why. He said, in everything, in every situation, no matter what the circumstances, and that word circumstances mean that anything that you are surrounded by, you are in the middle. And whatsoever the circumstances may be, be thankful. Why? Because this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Thanks. Thanks. I give you thanks for all that you have done. I'm so blessed that my soul is at rest. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. Is your thanksgiving pass overdue? Is your thanksgiving pass overdue? Is there a notice that has been sent out to you or placed on your conscience, Dr. Coffey, or heart you are saying that you are to remember to say thanks? A heart of gratitude. Don't die full. Die empty. By giving all that God had placed on the inside of you. I'm saying to somebody today. Just listening. Give thanks. With a grateful heart. Have a heart of gratitude. Don't take the, don't take the things that God have done for you for granted. Remember. To say thanks. Don't. Come on, let's thank God for that profound word. Gratitude, gratefulness in everything, give thanks. Uh, God gives us so many opportunities to, to bless him. But if we tell the truth, oftentimes we take so much for granted. But if you just stop and look around and recognize that oftentimes the things that we don't think about, nigga, the folks will never experience. He talked about running water and a roof over our heads. We're one of the richest countries in the world. And if God blesses you, maybe you've had a chance to travel. Hopefully you've traveled and been able to see that it's not like this everywhere. It ought to cause you to tell God thank you. But it also ought to create a spirit of gratitude to do what you can to be a blessing to those who may not have what you have. Because if you know anything about God, when he blesses us, he blesses us with a motive in mind. He blesses us so that we can be a blessing to others. Are y'all going to talk to me in here? That's the whole point of it. And so as we extend the invitation, if there's some man, some woman, some boy, or some girl, and you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, the ultimate gift giver, we offer him to you this morning. For the greatest gift you could ever receive is the gift of eternal life. And that's available. He gives it to you freely if you're willing to accept it. He says, whosoever will. Well, preacher, what do I have to do? Just recognize that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Was buried in a bar tomb. But three days later, arose with all power in his hand. And it's during that death on the cross that he paid redemption price. So that if you're willing to receive it, you could have the greatest gift this world could ever know. That is the gift of eternal life. A relationship with the sovereign Savior. And all you've got to do is say yes. Yes, Lord, to your will. Yes, Lord, to your way. And I'm here to tell you that when you let him in, he'll begin to change the way you walk. He'll begin to change the way you talk. He'll begin to change the way you think. You'll begin to realize how grateful you really are. If you're here, you ought to come today. Bless the name of God. Come on, y'all. Give God praise. Thankful, thankful, thankful for who he is and for what he is. Will there be another today? Let today be a brand new start. Maybe you already know Christ, but you want to connect with our body of believers 
who made up in their mind, we gonna give God praise anyhow. Come on, connect with the body believers who we're doing a serious work for a soon coming king because we're grateful for all that God has done for us. If you're here, you ought to come. You can come by letter or you can come by your Christian experience. You're listening in, you can call in this morning, 386-447-5719. Someone should be standing by, pray with you, to get you on the street call straight, to bring you into a saving relationship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you too can join the winning team where we can receive bounty of blessings and in a spirit of gratitude, make it a point to be a blessing to others. If you're here, would you call in? If you're in this sanctuary, would you come forward today? Let today be the beginning of a brand new start for you. Come on and help us get the word out that yes, there's hope, but it's only found in him. Will you come? Thank you, oh Lord, oh Let today, let today be the moment that you come. Get on board. Help us be a shining light in a dark world. And as an act of gratitude, let others know that what he's done for you, he can do for them. Because he's no respect for a person. If you just come, I just want, want to thank you. Will there be another? Oh, he's been so good, he's been. Let today, let today be the moment where you make a public confession that you're on the Lord's side. Because you recognize that he's always been on your side. Come today. Don't miss this opportunity. Call in today. Will you do that? This is your moment, your opportunity. You already know him, but you're not connected. Call in today. Join us as we continue to march up the King's Highway, recognizing that every round goal gets higher and higher. But because of what he's done for us, because of the fact that he lives in us, we still claim victory in Jesus' name. Oh, he's been so good. He's been so If you're thankful, celebrate his goodness. You may be seated in the presence of our God. The invitation has been extended, and there's one standing before us. Somebody shout glory. glory. Somebody shout thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout praise the Lord. Word has gone forth, and it did not return. I ask now if we can word and present the individual to us at this time.
Sister Coleman. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Let me, let me go ahead and just take pastoral privilege and say welcome home. Good to have you. Amen. We're grateful that you've come to unite with this local body of believers. And you come already knowing Christ as your personal Savior. Amen. Well, that's key. Well, I want you to know that you've come at a good time because we're looking for workers. But uh, we're still on the mission field for the Lord. And so we pray that you come to help us get the word out. Yes, there is hope, but it's only found in being connected to a sovereign Savior. We're so grateful that you're here, and you can't see it, but I'm tickle pink that the Lord has sent you this way. Amen. Amen. We celebrate you, and we ask that at the conclusion of this service, you will go right next door so they will give you more information uh, about what's necessary so that we can go ahead and bring you into the fold. You're already here for just the procedures and the pastors that are necessary service so that we can bring you on board because you're as part of our family. We love you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so very much. You may take your seat. Yes, ma'am. from praising God and stop folk. Baby, you don't know that story. If she messes up your hair, go to the beauty parlor, we'll pay for it. But don't stop them from giving God praise. Because you know, if you step on your new shoes, we'll go get them shine. But don't stop them from giving God praise. You just never know. But all the things that, as Rev, all the things that they have taken out, they did not steal your joy. Amen. So we thank God for you. And thank you for being so transparent. Uh, you did not have to do that. God is good at all, all the time. We thank God for each of you and we pray that you once again will leave inspired and motivated to continue to walk uh, down the street called gratitude. Hopefully you live on the highway called thankfulness. Amen. So that we can continue to give God thanks, praise, and glory and continue to have the world figure out how can they be so happy with all that's going on around them. Well, it's very simple. Because of the one who lives in us. Yeah. Amen. 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 Musicians, thank you. Choir, thank you. Deacon, Deacon Robinson, good to see you back. Amen. Deacon S. Robinson, welcome home. Let us all stand. We pray that God will continue to bless each and every one of you. We hope to see you on Wednesday evening, uh, 7 p.m., as well as Wednesday morning for our time of Bible study. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, for this day, for this message, and for this reminder that we should always operate in a spirit of gratefulness and gratitude. We should always be ready and willing and able to give you praise for all that you continue to do for us, with us, and even in us. Thank you for the preacher this morning, dear God. Thank you for the power of the anointing that you placed in him and on him. And I pray that all of us will take heed to that which was given to us this morning and that it will burn in our hearts that we may continue to be able to always find something to give you thanks and praise for. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, sweet community of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with these loud people now henceforth and forevermore. Let every heart say, Amen.
Amen. May the Lord God bless you real good. May the Lord God bless you real good. God bless you. May the Lord.